Hey guys, welcome back. So in this lesson, we are going to briefly touch on these common objects that you would interact with if you are developing a custom team, right? So WP user, I mean, you wouldn't be interacting with WP user that much with that object, but I'm still going to sort of touch on it and um, we can we can look into it, what sort of information is available to us, how can we use conditionals on the attributes that we can retrieve from the WP user if we want to display any sort of data or display any messages to the users, right? Then we will look into the WP query object and then we are going to look into the WP post object, okay? So let's start with the WP user. And before we get into the objects, I just want to make sure that you guys understand that WordPress was basically built a long, long time ago and by the time it was done, there was no concept of OOP in PHP itself. So a lot more development is happening and things are moving um, quite nicely, right? I believe the minimum version they've started now supporting is 5.2 or is it 5.6? I'm not too sure, but things have moved on from, you know, the version four, which they were supporting for a long time. And that's due to the fact that, you know, 30% of your internet is powered by WordPress, right? It's a huge, huge platform. So now we will look into the WP user and let's see if we can interact with this object and what sort of information we get back from the user object, right? Okay, so let's go into my editor. Now, I have uh, still got the 2019 team, uh, 2019 team loaded in my PHP Storm. If you watched the, I believe it was a lesson two, if you watched that, how I set it up and um, for the reason of having the auto completion or the IntelliSense that I would get a PHP Storm. Um, so if you followed that uh, video, I'm sure that you will, you know, PHP Storm is going to help you a lot because it's great. I mean, when it comes to the PHP projects, I just love PHP Storm. Uh, it helps me a lot. Right, okay, so first of all, you wouldn't want to do whatever I'm doing here. It's more of a dirty way of doing things, okay? So your function will always go into the functions.php file. But I'm just going to create a function just to make my life easier and we can easily see the output, okay? So, and that will accept the data. And we will echo out any pre tags, okay? And we will just close the pre tag there. Great. And what I'll do is that I'm just going to wire dump the data itself. Okay. Once we have dumped the data, we will ask for it to die. So that way it doesn't have to load anything else. Okay. So let's see what information we get back from the WP user. Okay. So you can actually go and there, there are two ways of sort of um, initializing the WP user object, I believe. And what you could do is, uh, let's have a quick look in the codex. Okay, so if I come to the codex or actually you can just have a quick look and it will bring it up. So you can either pass an ID you can pass in a name or you can even pass a blog ID, okay? And the user object basically, it lets you interact with the user, find out about the roles, properties, capabilities of a specific user, okay? So that's what we want to do. What I could do is I can actually ask for, get the current user and then get the site ID, okay? so. Because in WordPress, you can have multi-site set up, right? And you want to make sure that, for example, John, if he's registered on site A, you don't want to uh, get everything out from the site B, um, you know, in site A, okay? So for that reason, you get the site uh, ID like that, okay? So now, if I dump the WP user, let's have a look. Let's see what do we get. I'll come back to the browser and if I refresh and that's 
the WP user object that we are getting from there. Great. Okay, so that's one way of doing it. Okay. Another way of you know getting the current user is obviously the one that we just used. That will also behind the scene initialize the WP user. Okay. So if I do the WP user here and come back, we should get exactly the same object and we do. Okay. Now we can actually get a lot of uh, properties. Okay. And in fact, let's go back to that scenario when I was saying that you can actually uh, display a certain message for people with certain capabilities. Does that make sense? So let's say that if I were to say that any administrators for this site, when they log in and they go onto the main page, I want to display them some sort of a notice or something, right? So the way I would do it is I'll just go ahead and I'm, I'm by the way, I'm only working in the index.php, which is as I talked about in the uh, one of the previous lessons that it's a catch all route kind of thing for you right the base template so this code will always run if you have it in the index file and that's what I want to do will make my life easier so we'll say that if user has the capability of administrator and because I only have one user and that's myself in the database so yeah I'm just going to cheat in that way <laughs> I'm just gonna target myself so if w uh, if wp user has the capability of administrator then we will show a message make sure you proof read the pending posts okay oops okay and in fact we will just de uh, die and dump and that way the rest of the code doesn't have to run okay let's see there we go okay but if I were to um, in fact put the echo and let's see if I were to put the h1 tag here and that should work exactly the same but that means the rest of the code will also run okay great so that's how you will basically retrieve you know, the capabilities from the user. As I said, a lot of other information you can get from the user. If you are in doubt, and especially if you are developing a theme, Codex is your friend. Just refer to it. Stack Overflow is full. Okay. But um, you've got the magic words as well. Uh, sorry, the magic methods as well. So you've got the get and set. Okay. So you can set certain values. You can retrieve certain values and you can get the role capabilities and all that stuff so if i were to say let me remove that wp user get role caps uh, and the role caps would be the roles and capabilities i believe um so if i were come if i were to come here yeah there we go so these are different capabilities manage categories moderate the comments, edit the users, yeah? So if I were to get, and these are all attached to, the set, to this user that we are inquiring, okay? Administrator, his administrator can install the themes, update the themes, you know, so you might want to like, for example, if you want to restrict a certain person, uh, and this is something we used to do with the clients that we would give them uh, login details, but we would change their permissions so they wouldn't be able to, you know, update the plugins because of the security risk, right? Or they wouldn't be able to install other themes and stuff like that. You know, you'd be amazed how many times clients have come back and they've messed it, messed everything up. So we used to kind of customize the capabilities, right? So if I were to say has cap and let's see, edit user, was it? Uh, in fact, I copied it, didn't I? Yeah, okay. So let's see, what does it give us? Yeah, so I can actually edit the user if I want to. Okay. What else can we see? So, as I said, you know, go through the documentation. So in here, for example, if the current user has 
if the current user exists, do something if the current user has a property, you know, so you can basically have certain properties attached to it, you know, like, for example, Twitter and all that stuff, then, yeah, uh, you can, you can basically make uh, or create queries on the basis of the properties attached to that user. Get the user data, okay, so you can get uh, user information. It's pretty much the same stuff, really. I mean, you know, the thing with the word process, you can do the same thing in so many different ways, right? So you can actually ask for other information about the user, for example, the username. Uh, you can get the user email, the username, you can get the description, first name, last name, login, registered, if the user has a status, and all that information, right? So I hope that helps just to understand how you can use the user object. We'll just move on to the WP query.